Who expected for the schools to close just a few days ago or even a week ago? None of us, right? So we are in uncharted territory, but the good news is that flexibility is the hallmark of a good teacher. And we are really going to be using that flexibility muscle in the weeks ahead. Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ginsburg of Reading Simplified, and we have created a system that's streamlined for teaching anyone how to read, whether beginner or struggler. And this system is streamlined and efficient and also accelerates students' reading achievement rapidly. So there's no better time than zeroing in on a streamlined and highly efficient system than now, right? Because we have so much uncertainty. I'm excited to join to you, join with you together in a, a temporary group and a training series called Let's Do This, Teaching Reading Beyond the Classroom. And let me get that started with you. We'll be going live for five days with short um, videos like this one is day one, and we're going to be collaborating with you in a Facebook group. So let's do this, shall we? See if my slide will come. Love technology. First of all, I want to tell you where this all came from. Uh, first of all, I also need to say thank you. I emailed the Reading Simplified community and said, what do you need? This is all so unexpected and I didn't know how every school and school district and state would react. And we got an overwhelming um, amount of responses from you to a survey. We had over 1300 people answer. And here is just an example of a word cloud of some of your comments. So it was super helpful to get your responses. And based on your responses, we are going to be creating this first five days of uh, video training and the support in the Facebook group. So this is this is priceless to me. I was so moved by how many people responded because it shows that this is really uh, needed and we need to come together. And I hope that I can be a part of helping you through that. Um, we are going to be focusing on the top three things that you guys requested, how to teach reading online, how to find resources for your students online, and how to find printable resources for your students. So in brief, our objective with this special event is to support teachers in their support of children and parents with reading instruction during sudden school closures. Parents who are in our community may also benefit, but our main ministry first will be to the teachers. And what I'm committing to is to 15 minute videos each day that will be loaded up in the private Facebook group, Let's Do This, Teaching Reading Beyond the Classroom, and also going live to expand on those videos to hear from you, hear what's succeeding, working already for you, what your doubts are, and how do we can create some solutions in a Facebook Live. So you'll have two ways to consume it that way within Facebook. Also, we will take these videos and put them on readingsimplified.com the day after they go live. So that's an option for those of you who are not interested in Facebook. Here is our agenda for the first five days. We may go beyond that to see how, based on what you need, but at least now this is the agenda for the next five days based on the feedback you gave me in your, the survey of 1300 responses. Today, we're gonna to focus on realistic streamlined plan for teaching reading online. This is not how to do all the bells and whistles and not how to do the whole nine yards. It's just to give you a vision, maybe get you started and help you, help you take step one. Wednesday, we'll talk about how to use my top three tools for online learning, so that'll pair well with Tuesday. Thursday, we'll talk about outside of the box ways to reach your students from afar, particularly if they don't have internet or computers. Friday, we'll talk about resources for parents, including how to help your child practice reading and Saturday and day in our fifth video we'll talk about hitting the mark serving student diagnostic reading instruction because now is a great opportunity if we haven't been differentiating before we can certainly do it now and I promise a $50 gift card to an Amazon or to Amazon or teachers pay teachers for one of the survey respondents so we'll that will be in the Facebook group um, let's do this teaching me on the classroom after this video so look forward to that 
The other thing I want you to see inside that Facebook group is there's this PDF. This is day one's PDF that is the freebie to go along with today's content. I'm gonna go through these categories that are on this PDF in this video, but then once you uh, have watched the video, you can snag the PDF inside the Facebook group and the PDF has hyperlinks so you can go directly to the websites I'm going to refer. So most days we will have a PDF like that. So make sure you get inside the Facebook group. Let's do this teaching reading beyond the classroom. So these are some of the guide posts that I'm thinking about. I'm hearing from a lot of you and you think that, I think you're thinking the same thing. Um, number one, keep it simple, sister. Keep it simple for you, keep it simple for the students and keep it simple for their parents. This is so overwhelming to many people. There's so many, um, remarkably remarkably hard challenges that some people are facing um, in, in, at home that we can't expect at all the at-home work to be comparable to what was going on at school. That's one principle about keeping it simple, the KISS principle. Another perspective is that you will be inundated with lots of possibilities, but I'm going to help you kind of rein it in and focus on the biggest movers, the biggest rock, so to speak, that you can get the biggest bang for your buck from. And also in the same vein, let's not um, dump too much technology on ourselves or our teachers. So we're going to keep it simple in all things, how much curriculum we expect, how much technology we expect, and the communication mechanisms we expect. That's my recommendation. Along the way, you may be trying new technology and you may be trying it with students and you may feel awkward. Just do your best and forget the rest. We are all in this together. Everyone knows it's we don't have the training for these things. So um, all the little baby steps we make are going to benefit us in the long run. So, and we'll be here to help you with it. Relatedly, number three, um, model your confusion or your doubts or your learning. Um, show the students that learning never ends. If you make a mistake because you click the wrong thing in a Zoom classroom, don't worry about it. It's not anything to be embarrassed about. It's an opportunity for you to say, ha, huh, I'm gonna learn something here. This is how life is. We're always learning. And if you quit learning, you're gonna lose out on life. And then finally, let's think outside the box because this is, you know, we're not in the school anymore. Everything's gonna have to be radically different. We may come up with things that are even better than traditional schooling this, this way. So I'm excited about the opportunities. So let's get into this, the topic for today, a realistic plan. What I'm going to recommend to you for reading instruction online is uh, a three-part level of implementation. So maybe some of you or many of you can only aim for level one implementation, maybe now or forever. Um, or some of you may be able to do level one implementation and then next week or the following week add level two implementation. And then in another week, if we go that long, um, level three implementation. So this is a suggestion based on what is most important and also um, most important for reading achievement and also based on what's most feasible given all the dynamics that we have. Today we're talking about teaching online. We will expand this into other ways you can teach online or teach at a distance that's not necessarily based all online. But today let's assume that you can do some teaching online. First thing that I think most of us can aim for in some form or fashion is to have a virtual read aloud where you get your whole class or as many who can onto a Zoom call. Zoom is a free, now free, um, web conferencing software that is being used all over the world by a lot of people. It is fairly easy to use and they've expanded the opportunities for um, educators to use it for more than just 40 minutes. It's free for, um, even during regular um, life. If Zoom doesn't work for you, um, Google Hangouts Meet might work. They have also opened up access. If you are a Google Suite member, or maybe your school has that type of access, then you might prefer to use Google Hangouts Meet. So all of your students can get on a Zoom call together, see you and you can see them. They can hear you and you can, uh, and they can, um, and you can also hear them. And then you give a read aloud, make it interactive, stop for questions, ask them what they think. Certainly 
uh, ask them how they feel about um, doing this online, but also just get in there to as many um, emotional responses, especially in these early days, because we want to really nurture them. So the read aloud is a great way to build background knowledge, to build their knowledge of sophisticated written language, and also to stay more connected to your students. You could read aloud fiction, but also nonfiction. It could be on the topic of the coronavirus, it could be something completely different from that and maybe more positive. The nice thing about Zoom is that it automatic, well, you can set it to automatically record and then send that link. So if your students are not able to be there um, because of technolo technological difficulties or because they're just, they're somehow, they're busy at that time, you can send them that email and you could also um, attach this recording into some sort of electronic hub that you might be building, maybe a Google Classroom hub or some Dropbox folders, whatever where, place you're going to decide to create as a hub for your students. And so let's do the read aloud. It'll build a it'll build community and help you stay in touch with your kids in a fun way that also is developing their language and literacy. Um, comprehension. Now, in addition to that, or in in uh, in place of that, there are also online um, reading reading aloud options that are available that I want to recommend to you. I've got four of my favorites here. There are so many out there, but I didn't want to overwhelm you or parents. What I recommend is you pick one if you don't already have one. Check these out and pick one and kind of communicate to parents with that. Pinna is a um, podcast collection of children's resources and it is free for the next 60 days because of these uh, extraordinary times. Books is a new storybook read aloud program. It's always free or at least this first year it's free. They have a growing collection and many of you know about Epic. They probably have the largest collection and you can get an educator account and then send that information to your parents so that you can um, monitor what your students are reading. Raz Kids is not free right now, but it is um, something that many people have, so I just didn't want you to forget about that. And that all of these will read aloud texts or stories to the student. And Raz Kids also allows the student to, um, it's not allows, they all allow the student to read it, but it, it has a more um, natural transition to reading, having the student read. And then, of course, don't forget whatever district resources you already have. If your district has paid for Tumble Books, for instance, another online reading program, make sure you're using that. So this is level one implementation. And you say, what is Zoom? Don't worry, I got you covered. That's what day two is going to be about, how to use Zoom, among other things. So that's level one implementation. A whole group read aloud. But that's probably not going to get your kids reading themselves and giving them the coaching on their reading. So the next step might be in another week or in a couple of weeks, maybe you could, or maybe tomorrow, you could ramp up to doing small group reading instruction that is differentiated. So in this way, we might be better off than we were in the classroom because you can meet with three to four kids at the same time via Zoom, see their faces. They can see the same text that you see. And then... Uh, you can listen to them read. They could take turns reading. They could read chorally, and you can tailor your instruction to them, and you don't have the rest of the class to distract you. So you could set up a set schedule. Maybe you do the read aloud at 8.30, and at um, 9.15, you start group one, and at 9... 45 you start group two, and you just move on. Make sure you put build-in breaks between those two groups. And again, these can be recorded and sent to other students. By the way, Zoom is also functional on mobile. So the families that don't have computers still could make this work for the child. And I even heard of a kindergarten teacher who just recently did this with um, Zoom with kindergartners uh, for the first time. So it's doable. And if you don't have a system for what the small group reading instruction would look like, this is the one that we recommend here at Reading Simplified. I'm not going to be able to go into all of it because we're keeping this to 15 minutes-ish. Um, but, oops, I'm failing on the 15 minutes. Oops, I'm failing on the 15 minutes. The first day is going to go long because there's more housekeeping. Okay, so 
Um, the third three component lesson of rereading for fluency, word work, choosing from usually about one or two activities, usually two, and then guided oral reading of a new text. Many of you are doing something similar like that in small groups. We'd just recommend that you maybe take it online again, probably with Zoom. We will give you more information about these activities and this, these three components in the next few days and weeks if that's interesting to you. But um, and if you don't want to do this and you already have a format, stick with the format you have and um, make it consistent. I really like the consistency of a three component lesson um, for the school day, but especially in these uncertain times. These are the core activities, the word work activities that we would choose from. Build it and, or switch it, read it, sort it, and write it. So those are the four core activities we use at Reading Simplified. And a lot of you know some of them, or many of you have been testing out Switch It before. Um, but we, if you don't know what they are, you can hang tight. We will reveal them in, over the next few days and weeks if we're still learning about this all together. Or you can do, of course, what you have already been doing, and but just keep it consistent and keep the routine to um, something that um, students can count on when they're coming together with a small group. The reason that we recommend these activities is that the activities are very efficient and they can target into students' specific needs. We call it the most pressing need. Now, the next level of implementation might be adding in writing. Maybe you want to give a writing mini lesson, 5-15 minutes over Zoom, and then listen to students share their work. They can show their work, um, or you could get their work and show it on the screen. That's probably the easiest. Again, you could record this video and send it to parents if the students were not able to participate. So that may be, you know, weeks ahead of you. Maybe some of you are going to try that tomorrow or next week, but that would be maybe something to look forward to. Um, the level three implementation would be to fold in more writing instruction. If you're not familiar with mini lessons, this is a real fast uh, overview of the idea, but it's uh, in the title. Let's keep it really mini, five to 15 minutes, which is kind of what I'm trying to do here. Model how to use it with a Google Doc via Zoom. So it's easy to have the Google Doc that maybe you're writing some example sentences or showing some example paragraphs on, and then the kids can see it via Zoom. So give a quick mini lesson, then ask them to do something with it. Uh, if you don't have some specific curriculum right now that you really need to address and you're kind of open-ended for writing, I would think that these times are a, a great thing to be talking about in our writing. Maybe that you could trigger the students to keep a diary. Um, it could be a diary about their own personal experience or it could be a diary of them noting the, the most important thing from the news. That would be an interesting assignment. Can they get the who, what, when, where, how? Um, down into like three or five sentences and uh, keep a collection of the biggest news um, happenings. That might be interesting. Or if they're not too sick of it or you are too sick of it, maybe they could research COVID-19 or some other version of pandemics like the Spanish flu and then they could report about it through writing, through PowerPoints, through video. Um, maybe you give them the creative options to choose the how. And then, of course, let's not forget the accountability of having them produce something and an opportunity to share it. With Zoom and everybody's coming together, it's, it's, it builds the community and so they have an opportunity to not feel so isolated. So I highly recommend um, that. Now, this was a rapid fire, but just hopefully giving you some visions for how you might do this. Remember, this was just a streamlined plan for thinking big picture about how to teach reading online. Um, the read aloud is what you would start with most likely. Or, and if you can't do it with Zoom or some other uh, virtual technology, maybe you can send students and their parents to a particular site. Maybe you could even assign some books or tell them to let you know which books they did listen to. And here is our agenda for the coming days. It's posted in the Facebook group and in the email if you have signed up for this uh, Let's Do This event. And as we look forward to uh, the next few days, again, these videos will keep coming to you. We are going to be sharing them every day, 4 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have m deeper trainings if you want more, more information and curated lists in um, the Facebook group. And also we'll have 
this information eventually on a blog post at readingsimplified.com. If you go to most recent, you'll find that. And tomorrow we'll hit 15 minutes. Sorry, it went over today. See you soon. Would you like future complimentary trainings like this here at Reading Simplified? Then make sure you ring the bell here at YouTube to become a subscriber so that you learn more of our ways of streamlining instruction and accelerating students' reading achievement. And you can also find us on Facebook at Reading Simplified, usually on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live with other complimentary trainings and we give away some freebies for teachers and parents. So I hope to see you here again next time on YouTube or even on Facebook. Take care.